car physics, ragdolls, driving AI, the Brackies Game Jam 2020. Oh, uh, point two. My past Game Jam entries have been questionable, but this time things were different. Instead of giving myself arbitrary restrictions, I'd be making a 3D game in Unity. I teamed up with my friend Jack, who makes a lot of cool low-poly 3D games over on his channel Bargy. He would make most of the game's art, and I'd write most of the code. The theme for the jam was... Rewind. The theme for the jam was... Re... Wait, didn't I already say that? The jam began at 5am in my time, but Jack's in the UK, which is 6 hours ahead of me, so by the time I got up, he already had a lot of cool ideas for the theme. The one that stood out to us most was a racing game with a wind-up, remote-controlled car. You'd have to constantly run up to your car to wind it up, and run back to your remote control to steer it. So, you know, rewind. We put together a prototype of our basic idea with an alien and car modeled by Jack, and this high-tech remote control transmitter, represented by a cube. When you're near the car and press the left mouse button, you wind up the car, and after you release, it starts driving away. Then, when you go up to the controller and click, you switch your control to the car and steer it with the arrow keys. The way it works is pretty simple. When you're controlling the player within a certain range of the car and hold down the left mouse button, I start subtracting from a float, clamping it so that it doesn't extend further than your wind capacity. Then, when the left mouse button isn't being held down, I add to that float, clamping it so that it doesn't go above zero, and set the velocity of the car's rigid body to... not just the float, but the float passed through a mathematical function. I was pretty bored while working on this whole system and wanted to do something interesting, so I decided to find a random curve online to plug the velocity into. I googled cool math curves and found this thing called a sigmoid curve. People who are actually good at math probably know what that is, but luckily all I really needed was my basic pre-calculus knowledge to tweak the curve and make a function for it in my code. And then when you're in range of the high-tech remote control, clicking the mouse changes your control to the car, meaning the camera's target lerps to the car's position, and the keyboard's horizontal axis multiplied by the car's velocity over the maximum allowed velocity is added to the car's Y rotation, meaning the car's turning speed correlates with its driving speed, and you can't turn the car if it isn't moving. I also rotate the car mesh's Z rotation to make it kind of lean into its turns. After telling Jack about the sigmoid curve, he said we should name the alien Sigmoid. Somehow that led to a very deep body of lore about two alien brothers named Sigmoid and... Digmoid? Digmoid is absolute garbage. We decided to go all out with the space theme for the game, so while Jack transformed the scene into Mars, it was time for me to create the next essential part of the game. Ragdolling. Jack added a ragdoll to the player's rig, and it was up to me to create a system of switching between the player's normal animated state and his floppy ragdoll state. This was very easy, and I actually got it working on the first try- Okay, fine, it was the second try, but- Okay, okay, it was actually- After a lot of tries, I finally got it working- What? Okay, now it's... kind of working? So, I made some tweaks, and you could finally turn into a ragdoll and stand up. It isn't always perfectly seamless, but it's good enough. Coming up with an idea of how to enable and disable a ragdoll wasn't too hard. A ragdoll is just a bunch of dynamic rigid bodies, so if I loop through them all and set them to kinematic, the ragdoll is disabled. With this, I can enable and disable the ragdoll, but the player needs to slowly stand back up after falling. So I created a class called transform copy that just stores two lists of vector 3s and has methods for easily getting and setting them. Using this, I can create a transform copy of the player's transform when the game starts, and before re-enabling the player's animator, I can loop through the player's transforms and lerp their positions and rotations to those of the transform copy. This is where I was having most of those issues. 
The main cause of the problem was that the colliders of the limbs were colliding with one another while trying to reach their target positions. So I can just disable their colliders when they reach that stage of my ragdoll handler and enable them once the player reaches his normal animated state. So I made the player enter his ragdoll state when hitting an object while moving and stand up after some time has passed. This is when I noticed that the player lurps back to the position where he was hit when he stands up. So to fix it, I just unparent the ragdoll from the player and move the player to the ragdoll's position with a smooth damp as it's being flung around. And now we have a decent ragdolling system. Aw, oh, look at Sigmoid, he's just chilling. Wait, yo Sigmoid, there's a car coming dude, Sigmoid, Sigmoid, there's a car! Sigmoid, look out! The car's right behind you! Oh no, he can't hear us! He has headphones on! Oh my god, Sigmoid! Sigmoid, look out! Sigmoid, the car! No! Oh, no. Not sure if you noticed, but that car was actually being steered by an AI. That was the next thing I was working on, and the last major component of the game that needed to be implemented. I started off by just duplicating the player's car and stripping away code so that it drives in a straight line. The script is pretty similar to the car controller script, so I probably should have made them inherit the same base class and use polymorphism, but I mean it's a game jam, and I can just delete the source code after submitting the game. I'm definitely gonna regret that. I needed to make the car follow a path, so my idea was to just create a bunch of empty game objects to act as nodes and have the car steer to each node. So I made my script take in an array of transforms. Then I have an integer that represents the current node that starts at zero. I get the direction of the node by subtracting its position from the car's position and make the car's Y rotation rotate toward that target direction at a fixed speed. Then once the car gets within a certain range of that node, I add one to the current node so the car will move toward the next node in the array. And when you reach the end of the array, I track the amount of laps the car has completed, which will come in handy later, and set the current node back to zero. Surprisingly, considering this was just a random idea that came into my head, it actually worked pretty well. And you could do more complex paths too. I decided to add an opposing force to the player's ragdoll when hitting something, and for the AI cars, I made this force, like, really big. After that, Jack had just finished the track, so I filled it with a lot of nodes to test out the driving AI. Alright, there's 22 nodes. Node there isn't. Something I struggled with was adding enough variation to the path following for it to work well with multiple cars. I ended up just settling for adding a random offset to each car's target position, randomizing the speeds of each car after they reach a node, then, so the cars wouldn't get too close to one another, I gave them these big sphere colliders and used Unity's collision matrix thing that Jack told me about to make the sphere colliders only affect other AI cars. I didn't really like the car AI, but I figured it was good enough to move on. I made some UI icons in GIMP. They're pretty much just squares with rounded corners and traced stock images. I made pop-ups for when you're in range of the car's crank or the remote control, which Jack made an epic model for by the way, and then I made a gauge to show how much, um, juice your car has. It was upside down the entire time, but eventually I realized and fixed that. That's when I realized it was almost 4am and I should probably go to bed. It was the last day of the jam, and there was still a lot to do. The jam ended at 5am for me, since Brackies hates Americans, so I knew it was going to be a long day. The first thing I did was create a system for sorting the car's travel distances so I could display what place the player was in. I won't go into too much detail, cause it's just some sorting methods and weird workarounds to compensate for my lack of polymorphism. So I made a method that sorts the list based on that, and updates each car's placement accordingly. And whenever a car reaches a new node, I call that method. With that done, I had to get back to UI. I made a display of the player's current place in the top left, as well as a timer since obviously this game will become very popular in the speedrunning community. And using some free sound effects, as well as my amazing music skills, I made a little intro to the race with a countdown animation. I also made a winding sound effect For the ragdoll, I downloaded a bunch of punching sound effects and play a random one when you jump, or when a ragdoll collides with anything. It even plays a sound when colliding with its own limbs, which wasn't intentional but actually worked pretty well. 
Then I made an end screen that displays once you finish three laps and shows your place and time. As you can see, we were also planning to add an online leaderboard, but we ran out of time. So I ended up displaying your best time instead. Jack had already made a pretty sick main menu with things like character customization and an about page, so we were pretty much done now. The game took a concerning amount of time to compile, but we managed to upload a web build half an hour before the deadline. For some reason, certain animations were broken and the main menu's audio was distorted. But at that point, I was way too tired to care. So yeah, that's the game. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than my other stuff. But honestly, the biggest thing I learned from this wasn't how to make a ragdoll system or driving AI. I learned that spending a week of your life coding is a lot more fun when you're doing it with someone else. The best part of this jam was definitely getting to know Jack. Since this jam, I actually did another collab jam with Coder Gopher, and it really is crazy how fun these are. Make sure to check out Coder Gopher's channel for when he makes a video on that. And also make sure to subscribe to Bargy, of course. Links will be in the description. That's all, so thanks so much for watching. <clears throat> Follow me on Twitter. <clears throat> and see you in the next video.